Welcome to the live stream Bible study of the Abundant Love Church. I am Pastor Gary Bush. Thank you for tuning in this evening as we worship the Lord and as we study the Word of God. The Bible declares that we don't live by bread alone, but we live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So we'll sing a song here to get started, have a word of prayer, a few announcements, maybe another song, and then we'll go right into our lesson. Our song this evening is Precious Jesus. that we have this opportunity now to come into the house that is called by your name. 
Thank you because your house is a house of prayer. It's a house of praise. It's a house of deliverance. It's a house of healing. It's a house of joy. We bless your name tonight. We thank you. We glorify you. We laud you. We magnify you. We lift your name high. We make known your deeds among the people. You are a great God. You are an awesome God. You are a mighty God. We bless you tonight. We pray that you have your way in this place on this very night. Let every song be sang to the glory of your name and to the inspiration of your people. Let your word go forth and find good ground. Let it help us to grow thereby. Help us to produce fruit, much fruit, and let that fruit remain. Father, as vines, we want to stay attached. And brother, as branches, we want to stay attached to the vine so that we may produce fruit. We realize that we can do nothing without you. And so help us, Lord, live through us, speak through us, sing through us. Let your glory be revealed in this place tonight. We pray for our nation. We pray for our president, his staff. We pray for the Congress and those negotiations that are going on. Among them, we pray, oh God, that the result of those negotiations would be the glory of your name and the benefit of the people. We pray for the Supreme Court that has such hard decisions coming before them. We pray that they take a moral stance and stand with the word of God. We pray for the armed forces, men and women all over this world. They are somebody's sons, somebody's daughters. We pray for educators, for teachers, for administrators as they educate our children. We pray for every student that they would be astute, that they would be focused, so that they would be educated in the name of Jesus. Now, God, bless all that we say and all that we do tonight. Let this word that comes forth be anointed from on high. We do love you and we thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. And the Lord's people said, thank God. Come on, clap your hands in here and thank God. Amen. And amen. Amen. Glory to God. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Did you know it's singing with us? Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, Give you praise because of who you are. I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because.
the name of the Lord. We worship him, not just for what he does, what he gives, but we worship him for who he is. Amen. All right. Thank you. And God bless you at this time. We're going to have our announcers and our announcements will be given this evening by evangelist Vera Drew. Receive her with a hearty amen. for limited attendance, but we will observe social distancing and face mask guidelines. Our live stream times include Sunday school at 9.30 a.m., morning worship at 11 o'clock a.m. on Sundays. On Wednesday, we have our Disciples Academy Bible study at 6.30 p.m. If you would like to watch our streams, they are located on Abundant Love Church Facebook page, YouTube channel, AL Ministries, and that's capital A, capital L. We also have a Motivating Moments video on Monday mornings at 8 o'clock a.m. on our Abundant Love Church Facebook page. Our upcoming events include this Sunday, we will have our Clergy Appreciation Day. We will appreciate all the word carriers on this Sunday. Also this week, we will have a three-day consecration prayer on October 26th, 27th, and 28th from 6.30 p.m. to 7 o'clock p.m. Our sick and recovery include Philip, John, Philip and Flora Johnson, Travion Hillier, and our own Rayfield Martin. If you would like to make a contribution to our church, you may do so using Cash App, that's Abundant Love Church, dollar sign Abundant Love Church, capital A, capital L, and capital C. You may give through Givelify at Abundant Love Church. If you prefer to mail your offering, you may do so at Post Office Box 6577, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46896. And if you happen to be in our area, you may drop it off at our church, and that is located at 2615 New Haven Avenue, Fort Wayne, Indiana. These are all our announcements. Please continue to be blessed. Thank her. Thank her. Thank me. Happy. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise for the mighty God that He is? Hallelujah. And because He's a mighty God, hallelujah, I will be a witness for the Lord. I thank God that I stand here today and I am healed. Hallelujah, and I thank God for it. Come on and put your hands together. Even you at home while we're streaming. Come on, just clap your hands.
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Sister Tyra. Amen. It's not Sunday morning. It's Wednesday evening. Amen. But I tell you, Sister Kyra can take you to the throne. Amen. How many are with us? Amen. I tried to get her to keep on singing, but she just, she was done. <laughs> All right. Bless the Lord. Come on, clap your hands one more time. Amen. From sinking sand, he lifted me, and now I got the victory. I'm a witness. How many know he picked you up and turned you around from the direction you were going? And then he placed your feet. The psalmist said that he took my feet out of the miry clay and he put them on solid, solid ground. And that's what the Lord, that's what the Lord does when he comes into a life. Let's, that's what the Lord does. Okay, see if we can get this going here. All right. Amen. So, uh, certainly that's what the Lord does for us. The Lord helps us and establishes our going. Amen. In fact, Solomon said it like this. He said, if you acknowledge the Lord in all of your ways, amen, the word of God says that he will direct, he will guide your paths. So as long as you acknowledge God, to me, that's God's guarantee to keep you going in the right direction. Amen. amen. So we just have to remember to acknowledge him. Amen. 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 All right. God bless you. I want to call your attention again to the 10th chapter of the book of Romans. I have so thoroughly enjoyed this theme for this particular month, um, not just here in our own sanctuary, but our trips to Dupree Memorial and our trip uh, last uh, Sunday, I believe, to Oak Ridge Temple. Amen. The word of the Lord in reference to the men that carry the word of God has just been rich, been encouraging for my soul. And our theme here in the month of October is carriers of the word. Carriers of the word. And we found that theme in the book of Romans chapter number 10. And we got verses 13 through 17. I'm going to read those in your hearing this evening. Amen. Do you stand with us a moment? Witness for the Lord. Ooh, I gotta get there. I gotta, I gotta stop the place from shaking up here. <laughs> Romans 10 and 13 reads like this. It says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14 says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Verse 16 says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? Verse 17, the crowning verse says, so then, summation, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. May the Lord bless his word and those that hear and receive carriers of the word. Our theme, again, is very fitting for this particular month because October uh, annually, traditionally, is set aside as Clergy Appreciation Month. And this month has been set aside uh, to recognize, appreciate, and celebrate those individuals uh, who carry the gospel and deliver the gospel. 
to us. I want to say openly uh, that I appreciate every word carrier here in the Abundant Love Church. Uh, they make my job so much easier. Amen. Their assistance and their support is absolutely appreciated. And I may even take this opportunity to appreciate one of our preachers that is not in the state of Indiana. I want to give a shout out to uh, Reverend Patricia Laura. Amen. Amen. She's a great supporter here of Amen. the Abundant Love Church. She gives me uh, many good, inspiring songs and short messages. And so we certainly appreciate her. I uh, want you to know that we love you very much. And we're thinking of you, of course, in this Clergy Appreciation Month. And then to all of them, uh, I'm going to try to call a few names. I hope I don't forget uh, all of the names. There's also one other um, minister that's not exactly in the state of Indiana now. She's a uh, she's ours, but she's on loan to Michigan. We send a shout out to Monique Gillespie in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, we say finish your business and hurry home because the Lord has need of thee. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And certainly we appreciate uh, the Smiths, Kyra and Greg yeah. Smith. Amen. We appreciate the Franks, Willie and Cynthia yeah. Franks, uh, Vera Drew, Robert Bush, Gary Bush, Christopher Half Acre. Uh, uh, did I say Vera Drew? <laughs> Lisa Richard. Uh, how could I forget her? In the city of South Bend, Indiana. Lisa Richardson, great supporter. Amen. Here of the ministry. And let me say it like this uh, because of protocol, all that I don't know to call. <laughs> Amen. Hopefully I got a chance to mention each of them. We certainly appreciate your labor. Uh, Vanessa Pearson. How? How could I forget Vanessa and Winston Pearson? Support us here. Amen. Of the church. That's what happens when you start calling names and you don't have a list in front of you. Okay, now let me look out here, see if they've got any more names for me. Amen. Mother Ermin Thomas. How could I forget Mother Ermin Thomas, amen. Yeah. So, I, I, well, let me say it like this. We appreciate all of you all. Yeah. Amen. You all, you all make, uh, you make abundant love a joyful place to worship. And I yeah. certainly appreciate your labor. And, uh, I'm just giving shout outs by words and hopefully um, here next Sunday we'll do something in a tangible way. But please know what I give is only a token. Your real reward will come from the Lord. Amen. My father used to sing a song. He said, serving the Lord will pay off after a while. Amen. The wine that said, payday is coming after a while. So uh, put your time in. Amen. Don't get weary in well-doing. Because the Bible says you shall reap in due season if you do not faint. So don't become weary. Uh, keep doing what you're doing. The old folk used to say, stay on your post. Amen. Don't leave your post uncovered. And the Lord, uh, he's not slack. And he is not, uh, he will not forget your faithful works of righteousness. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So, Clergy Appreciation Month. Amen. I've got a list of preachers um, that uh, I enjoy and that help me and inspire me and uh, encourage me. Incidentally, I want to give another shout out uh, to Dad Virgil Griffin. Amen. And Dad Virgil Griffin is uh, 94 years old, soon to be 95 years old, but he is a constant encouragement uh, to me and my pastor. In fact, uh, he was there with us at Oak Ridge Temple on last Sunday, Amen. sitting on the front row, yelling and smiling and grinning at me. Made me feel like preaching. So we certainly appreciate him and all of those uh, uh, who give us a word to encourage us uh, to do what we're doing. I think I told you all this. Uh, depending on which uh, source you refer to, it says that anywhere from 1300 
to 2,000 preachers quit, pastors quit every day. Ponder that for a moment. Amen. I didn't get a chance to read all of the article because the article wanted to go into the reasons that pastors quit. And without reading the article, I am sure one of the reasons they quit is discouragement. Amen. Lack of being encouraged. Amen. So I want to encourage you this month. Uh, do something nice. Say something nice. Show uh, some display of gratitude for the men and the women of God who bring the word to you. Amen. 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 All right. Now I have to be kind of. Uh, we sang, and I've kind of talked here for a while, so I got to have to be very expeditious. Um, I would encourage you to get a pen and a piece of paper because I will make reference to a number of verses. I may not read them all, but I'll make reference to them. But in your time, uh, you want to go back and you want to uh, uh, study this particular part of the message because it is vitally important. As we've looked uh, through this passage of scripture, we found out that the purpose of the gospel of Jesus Christ is the saving of souls. That's what the gospel is for. Amen. The gospel is for, rather. It is Romans 1.16 where Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because, for, it is, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The gospel is is what God uses to save people. And so the purpose of the gospel is to save souls. And with that uh, responsibility of saving souls, God has selected men uh, to carry his word. Uh, he selects them. He empowers them. He sends them on assignment uh, to carry his word, proclaim his word. And by proclaiming his seed, and people are saved. And a preacher is one who proclaims the good news or the gospel of Jesus Christ. Gospel means good news. Amen. The gospel is salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. How do you get saved? You get saved by hearing the word and believing what the gospel says about Jesus Christ. What does the gospel say? The gospel says that God sent Jesus because he loved us in such a way, Jesus paid a sacrificial price, died in our stead because the wages of sin is death. And so what Jesus literally did is that he took the tab. I had the opportunity today uh, to go to lunch with my son. Amen. We've got a good little legacy going here. And so on his days off, uh, he takes me to lunch. I like that. The song said, didn't he work it out? Man, I was taking care of him, and now he's taking care of me. Amen. So, But on today, when we went out to eat, we had such a wonderful time. And when the uh, waiter laid the bill on the table, even though he should have paid for it and could have paid for it, I took it and I paid for it today. And that's what Jesus did for us. We had a bill due because of our sins. And instead of us paying for it, Jesus came in our stead, paid the price for us. The Bible says what, that with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. That's how you develop faith. You hear God's word and you believe it in your heart. And then with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And that's a little higher up in actually this 10th chapter of Romans that we're reading. And so... It is by the preaching of the gospel that men hear, believe, receive, and develop faith whereby they can be saved. And so through this passage, it talks about three aspects of the preacher. It talks about the necessity of the preacher. It talks about the authority of the preacher. And then it talks about the responsibility of the preacher. Two weeks ago, two weeks ago rather, we talked about the necessity of the preacher. The preacher is absolutely necessary. In verse number 14, there's a part of it that says, how shall they hear without a preacher? 
which means without a preacher, they can't hear. A preacher is absolutely necessary. And if God, in his wise providence, chose preaching as the way to distribute his word. And so the preacher is necessary because God's word has to be distributed because that's how people get saved. And so he's absolutely necessary. He's vital. He's essential. A preacher is an essential part of your trip from earth to heaven. Then we talked about the authority of the preacher. Uh, Jesus went in and turned over the tables in the church and they asked him, they said, who by which, whose authority? Who gave you the right to do this? You're coming in here and doing things in here. Who gave you the authority to do this? And so we understand that it's God's authority. How shall they preach except they be sent? And the God sent, the God anointed preacher has the right to make decisions. He has the right to give commands and orders and give direction. And then he has the right to enforce the obedience. And when we say enforce the obedience, that is, he is able to bring the word of God with rebuke, with correction, and with instruction so that things that are not going as they should can line up and go as they should. And so the authority of the preacher comes from God. God selects them. God chooses them. It is God's business who he chooses. Amen. Now, come on. Now just come on. Can we be real here for a minute? Sometimes we look at people and say, oh, no, they ain't no preacher. But incidentally, you don't have the right to do that. You didn't hire them, and you can't fire them. Okay. It is God. It is the wisdom of God, and and God is able to see something that we are unable to see. Never forget this. The Bible says, judge not that you be not judged. The reason you are not supposed to judge is because you can't see inside the heart. The Bible says that man looks on the outward appearance. You can't see what's going on in a person's heart, but God can. And so God chooses because he can see and he's looking. The Bible says that he's going to and fro in the earth looking for a certain kind of heart. So you can rest assured that the people that God selects, they have the kind of heart that God is looking for. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. And another thing I want to say to you just while I'm here, I may as well throw this in here. Never judge a movie by a scene. See, sometimes we look at people's lives and we only get a snapshot of the life. Yeah. And a snapshot of the life will not give you what I want to call solid proof and evidence to the content of a life. You know somebody for 5, 10, 15 years and they live 70, 75, 80 years. That's a very small portion of a, portion of a person's life. So you don't want to be guilty of judging something before time. Amen. The Bible says that when the wheat and the tear got in there, they said, you want us to pull them up? He said, oh, no, give it time. Let them grow together. And then at the end, the separating will go on. It's God that does the separating. It's God who chooses the preacher. It's God that anoints and it's God that empowers. And so we are just to recognize the anointing on a person's life. We are to accept the truth of the word from that life and then we're to prosper thereby. Amen? Amen? Okay, so now we want to talk about the responsibility of the preacher. So he's necessary and he's backed with the authority of God and he's got an awesome responsibility. In fact, his responsibility is larger than him. There is no way he can do it by himself. Without the help of God, he cannot fulfill and handle this responsibility. And what is that responsibility? Now, this is not in my notes tonight, but I made a note of it, and I want to kind of uh, give it to you this evening. The, the word responsibility, uh, by definition, it means having an obligation to do it. It's not just something... Uh, that you're doing as a hobby. It's a duty to you. It's, and when something is a duty to you, there is commendation when you do it, and there's consequence 
when you don't do it. Amen. See, uh, when something is your duty and it is backed by an authority, you get a commendation when you do it well. We look in our military, when they do something very well, they get medals, they get promotion, they get accommodations. But if they are derelict in their duty, if they are AWOL from their responsibility, then they get punished for not doing it. Are you all with me? Okay, listen, listen at what Paul says. Uh, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9 and 16, he says, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. In other words, I can't take any credit for this. I can't pin any flowers on me because it is of necessity that I preach it. I didn't choose it. It was laid upon me is what he's saying. Mm -hmm. And then he said, yeah, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. And if you look at your copy, there's an exclamation mark behind that sentence. And so what Paul is saying, Paul said, I didn't choose this. In other words, uh, I, I didn't knock myself off the beast on the Damascus road. I got knocked off. I asked who it was. He said, look, I'm going to show you what kind of things you got to suffer for my name. Say, it was laid on him. And then he says, woe to me if I don't preach it. I may go through some bad things preaching, you know. Uh, preaching the gospel, but it's worse if I refuse the call of God and don't preach. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because then I'm not only responsible for myself not doing God's will, I'm a hindrance to everybody I should have preached to and reached. Mm -hmm. And so a preacher that doesn't accept their call has blood on his hands. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. So it, 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 is, it is a calling. Okay. Nobody chooses to be a God sent preacher. We don't choose him. He chooses us. Amen. And then uh, in the pastoral letter to Timothy, the second Timothy, the fourth chapter, uh, I'm just going to earmark verses one through five. You can read it in your own time. I'm just going to kind of go through and pull out a couple of pieces uh, of the instruction that this Paul who said, woe unto me if I don't preach it, that he gives to his son in the gospel, uh, Timothy. And he says to him, I charge you before God and before the Lord Jesus Christ, before the quick and the dead, the live and the dead, at his appearing of his kingdom, he says, preach, not philosophy, don't preach politics, preach the word, preach the word of God. Be instant, in season and out of season. You got to be ready to preach all the time. Amen, somebody. Amen. Well, I don't feel like preaching today. Well, that's all right. Tie your bootstraps up and give us what you got. Amen. Woe to you if you don't preach it. You got to preach it in season. You got to preach it out of season. You got to preach it when people are jumping and touching the ceiling and saying amen. And you got to preach it when they stone, got stone-faced and looking at you like they don't know what you're talking about. You still got to preach with the same, same fervor and the same intensity. Amen? amen. It tells him to reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering and doctrine. In other words, do it and don't get tired of doing it. Stay consistent, okay? stay faithful in it. You know, a whole lot of people got a break here during the pandemic, but preachers didn't get a break. No, Amen. We haven't missed a Sunday. We haven't missed a message. We've been going just like, I mean, whether there's two or 20, we've been going just like the place is full because it is mandated to us to preach the gospel. Amen. 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 It kind of makes me remember the first day I came in to preach uh, after the pandemic started. I came in by myself. But let me tell you about the preaching. The preaching will draw people. Amen. And as I started preaching that morning, people started pulling up in the parking lot and coming in the sanctuary because that's what the word of God does. It draw, The anointing will draw. Amen. And so I, I, teased, I teased my musician. I said, because I was preaching and I looked out through the door. I seen her when she pulled in the parking lot. She came in on two wheels, just flying to get in here. So, so the word of God, we didn't get a break. We didn't get a break. We keep on preaching because we have to preach in season when it's convenient. We got to preach out of season when it's not convenient. We got to preach when people want to hear it. And we have to preach when people don't want to hear it. So 
You got to reprove, rebuke every now and then. You have to, you know, you have to kind of tap people on the shoulder and say, hey, that ain't the way it's done. You don't do it like that. And, you know, people don't always get happy when you correct them. But the man of God has a mandate to correct. Amen? Amen. You exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. You got to have long suffering when it comes to preaching because preaching is like gardening. You don't plant a seed today and get a, you know, you don't harvest it the next day. There's time between the time you plant and the harvest. Seed time and harvest. And so you, have, you can't be anxious. You can't think that your, your words are falling on deaf ears because some plant, some water, but God gives the increase. And so you have to have long suffering and you have to keep teach. You have to teach doctrine. Uh, if I can, I want to be real careful when I say this, but I think the church can uh, use some better marks in teaching doctrine. We are so accustomed to topical preaching and Sunday schools have, uh, you know, diminished and disappeared that there's not a real strong teaching of Bible doctrine. Amen, somebody. Amen. There are 10, 10 for sure major doctrines that you need to know about if you're going to be a good Christian. I don't have time to mention them all, but I'll mention some of them. Bibliography talks about the inerrancy and the superiority of the Bible. Nothing supersedes the Bible. There's theology, the study of God. There's Christology, the study of Christ. There's pneumatology, the study of the Holy Ghost. There's anthropology, which is the study of man. There's hematology, which is the study of sin. There's soteriology, which is the study of salvation. There's angelology, study of angels. Demonology, study of demons. And there's eschatology, study of last things. Okay, you need to be aware of those doctrines so that you have a firm foundation when people come try to tell you something that's not biblically sound. And so the man of God, the preacher, has to preach. He's got to be sound. He's got to endure with long suffering and doctrine. And the reason he has to do that, because verse number three says the time will come where people will not endure sound doctrine. I think we're in that day. Amen. People want something to make them feel good. They want something to shout. They want you to tell them how to be blessed, but they don't want to hear about their sin. Amen. And they heed to themselves. The Bible says teachers having itching ears. Amen. You know, the thing about, <laughs> oh, Lord. The thing about live streaming now and video broadcast of the service is if they start preaching something you don't want to hear, you can turn it off. <laughs> And that's a sign of itching ears. Well, I don't want to hear that. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to find me another message. No. That time, the Bible says they have itching ears. They heap to themselves. Teacher, watch this. And they'll turn away their ears from the truth of the word. Yes, they will. And not just turn away their ears from the truth of the word. The Bible says they'll be turned to fables. They'd rather watch a movie, rather hear a story than to hear what the truth is. Amen. And then it tells the preacher to make full proof of his ministry, tells him, watch this. We jump over these parts, but it says, watch in everything. The preacher has to have the insight of the Holy Ghost to watch and see the, how everything. Uh, somebody asked me the other day, so you watch a lot of news. I don't watch a lot of news, but I watch enough to know if Bible prophecy is being fulfilled. Yeah. And Bible prophecy is being fulfilled. We are in a divided nation. The Bible says that a house divided against itself cannot stand. So if something doesn't happen to bring our nation together, we're going to watch our nation crumble. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. It says watching all things. Watch this. Oh, I wish. You know, I can't take anything out of Scripture. But it says endure afflictions. Some people get afflicted and they run. To another place. It didn't tell the preacher to run. It said when you start being afflicted with certain things. He said endure it. Go through it. You're not an evangelist. But do the work of an evangelist. You've got to carry the gospel. That's why we go certain places. And we preach to other congregations. Not that I am an evangelist. But we're doing the work of an evangelist. And then it says make full proof. Of your ministry. 
And so preaching is not an elective. <laughs> preaching is a requirement. Anybody who went to school, you know you got core courses and then you have electives. Okay. Electives, you get a choice. Core courses, uh huh, you gotta have them. And if you don't get that course, you don't get your degree. And so preaching is not an elective. It's a core course for what's going on. And, and Paul says that it's been laid upon me. All right, my time is up. I'm going to go just a few more minutes since we started a few minutes late. Okay, his authority comes from God. The Bible says that he's sent by God. Now, why do, what is his responsibility? His responsibility is to build faith to, so that people's souls can be saved and they can believe in God. The object, the purpose of preaching is to get people who don't believe in God to believe in God because by believing and hearing the word, they get faith. Faith comes by hearing. Hearings come by the word of God. The word of God. So you got to have faith. In Hebrews 11 and 6, write that one down, it says without faith, it's impossible. It's impossible. So without faith, you can't please God. So you got to have faith. How do you get faith? Faith comes by hearing. Hearing comes by. How do you get the word of God? A preacher. So it's the preacher's job to preach so that you can hear and believe, develop faith, and then by developing faith, you're not only saved, but you have the ability to please God. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. So, so salvation comes through preaching. Preaching the word of God. So here, here, here's the, here's the uh, schoolhouse rock version of it. Okay. Saved people go to heaven. People get saved by the word. The word gives them faith. The word that they get comes from the preacher. So the preacher preaches. They get faith. They please God. And they go to heaven. So it's necessary. That's, that's the function of the word of the Lord. And God could, God, you know, God could have rolled it across the sky with clouds. God could have sent it in by comets. God could have written it in the stars. God could have, you know, he had a donkey preach to Balaam. He could have had donkeys preaching. He could have had roosters preaching. A rooster called Peter back to repentance after he denied him. But it pleased God, the Bible says, by the foolishness of preaching. It's 1 Corinthians, write these down. 1 Corinthians 1 is verse number 18 and verse number 21. Here's what verse number 18 says. It says, for the preaching of the cross to them that perish, foolishness. And people who are not going to heaven and don't want anything to do with the church and nothing to do with God and nothing with holiness and nothing with righteousness and is not concerned about being moral and going in a right direction. Church and preaching is foolishness to them. They don't want to see church. They don't have respect for preachers. They don't want to hear anything the preacher has to say. Sunday morning is just a longer weekend. It's not a day of worship. Okay. Because they did not, Romans says, because they did not want to retain God in their thoughts. God gave them up. And when God gave them up, they don't want to hear anything about church now. And the preaching of the cross, the preaching about Jesus to people who perish and don't have faith is foolishness. It sounds foolish to people. What, how can somebody die for me and I'm still alive? And, and how, can, how do I have to pay a God that I can't see and I can't hear? You know, see what I'm saying? Because without the eyes of faith, they can't see the invisible. Okay. Unless the glorious gospel comes and opens their eyes, it's just foolishness to them. To them that perish, it's foolishness. Watch this. But to us which are saved, it's the power of God. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Some people think nothing of church and then people who are saved, they think everything of church. I love what Elder Greg Smith says about the word of God. He said it's a lifeline. Yes, Amen. Man doesn't live by bread alone. He lives by the word of God. And without the word of God, he doesn't live. Amen. 
Amen. So, for the preaching of the cross to them that perish is foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Amen. The power of God is released. Watch this. In preaching of the word. Some people look at us and they say, oh, they so loud in church. It don't take all of that. They don't understand that we're being exposed to the power. Amen. Amen. And a demonstration of the anointing and the power of God in the delivery of his word. Yeah, we get hyped. Mm -hmm. Amen. You may go to a football game and get hyped. may go to a baseball or basketball game and get hyped. But I want you to know something. I get hyped right here in the service of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Not just praise. High praise. Because God is worthy. So in the preaching of the cross is foolishness to them that perish. But to us that are saved and believe, it is the power of God. And then uh, verse number 21 says this. Watch this. Not just a haphazard decision, but after that in the wisdom of God. Listen, now when you start talking about the wisdom of God, you talk about the wisdom and the decision making that set stars in the heavens and set planets spinning and revolving so that they don't run into each other. You talk about seasons that know which order they come in. When you start talking about the wisdom of God, not just the macro creation, but the micro creation, seals, uh, you know, cells and DNA. We talk about every kind of bird, every kind of fish, every kind of bug, and then things in the deep ocean that live down there and we haven't seen because we haven't been to those depths. It is the wisdom of God that created all of that. Amen. And so after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. They got so smart, they, they you know, they smarted God right out of their understanding. But it pleased God, watch this, by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. You know what that means? That means that anybody that's going to be saved, going to be saved by preaching. You don't think preaching is necessary? You can't be saved without it. Let me say that again. You don't think preaching is important? The wisdom of God saves people by preaching. Amen. So you got, you got to have a preacher. Amen? Amen. All right. So, so the preaching, it is the preaching of the, uh, the word of God and that foolishness of preaching that he saves them that believe. And so the responsibility of the man of God, of the preacher, is to declare the word in a clear and an understandable way so that people not only hear, but they believe God. And in so believing God, they develop faith. And with faith, they're able to please the Lord. Amen? Amen. All right, I'm going to close with this last verse um, it is actually, I love this verse because this is the verse um, that I got called to preach with. And you know how you read the Bible and it seems like a verse just kind of jumps off the page at you and you know it's directly for you? First time I read this verse, I knew it was for me, but I tried to act like it wasn't. And I just went on and kept trying to, you know, go my own way. And it's funny, I'll have to give it to you another time. But nothing went right until I told the Lord yes. And when I say nothing went right, I couldn't sleep. Everything that I tried to do didn't work. And I tried my best to run from preaching, and it was, it was agonizing. And when I said yes, everything just straightened out. <laughs> so, so God has a way of making your calling and your election sure to me. And the last verse... Uh, I want to give to you is St. Luke. It is 4 and 18. And it talks about what the preacher does when he preaches. It's good. It's real good. Luke 4 and 18. It's also recorded in Isaiah. And of course, in the transposition from the Old Testament to the New Testament, it reads a little differently, but it means the same thing. It says, the spirit of the Lord 
capital S, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because, that's how I know the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. One of the responsibilities of the preacher is to preach the gospel, the good news to poor people. Not just poor with money, poor in spirit, yeah. poor in hope, yeah. destitute of a life that's better than they're living. Amen. He's got to preach the gospel to the poor. He's sent to heal the brokenhearted. The word of God, when your heart is broken and when things are not going in your favor. It is the good news of the gospel that will give you hope to let you know you can get up and start again and make something of your life. Can I say something? I want to pause right here and tell you. I don't care what you've done or how you have failed. I don't care how your heart has been broken. It is the gospel that has the ability to heal your heart, stand you up on your feet again, and to start you in another direction that will be glorious to you and glorious for God. So I preach the gospel to the poor. You heal the broken heart. You preach deliverance to captives. People who are tied, people who are bound, you preach that they can be free. I don't care what kind of addiction you have, you can get free from it because there is liberty where the spirit of the Lord is. And so we preach to people, I don't care what got you tied up. If you want to be free, you can be free. Yeah. If he preaches deliverance to the captives, watch this. Recovering of sight to the blind. And not just natural sight, it's talking about understanding. The preacher will preach in such a way with truth that will give you understanding of what's happening in your life. So you can see and understand. One of the greatest revelations you can ever come up with. Is to know that everything that goes bad in your life is not because you've been bad. It's because you have an enemy. Amen. You can do everything right and still have trouble because you have an enemy trying to derail you. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. And so he preaches the recovery of sight to the blind. He sets at liberty them that are bruised. He sets free people who have been hurt. Amen. He preaches the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. All right, clap your hands right there when a few minutes over. But I think, I mean, I think we got to do it there. All right, so the preacher is necessary. The preacher has authority that comes from God, and he has an awesome responsibility. That's why he has to abide in the vine, because without the Lord's anointing and without the word, he can do nothing. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Are there any prayer requests? No prayer requests this evening. All right. God bless you. Uh, I'm going to pray this prayer and we'll be finished this evening. Amen? Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you selected and chose preachers. We thank you that they fulfill uh, their purpose in the earth realm. We thank you that they fulfill a need that the earth has to know you and to restore fellowship with you. We thank you, Father, that their authority doesn't come from the White House, but their authority comes from heaven, from the God that sits on the throne. And then, Father, we thank you for the awesome responsibility that you've put in their hands. And I pray today, Lord, that you would anoint every preacher of your word Help them to stand up under the weight of carrying the word to the people who need it so badly. I pray, God, that you would make us a light and a declarer of the righteousness of God. Now, Father, I pray that this word would go into the good ground of the heart. Let it bear fruit, much fruit, and let the fruit remain. Bless this one that teaches. In Jesus' name, and the Lord's people said, thank God. Amen. amen. And amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful